There's a street on the Hamilton Mountain that can take you from Concession, at the Escarpment's Edge, all the way to Rymel Road, and a little bit beyond. It is essentially an extension of the Jolly Cut, and therefore an extension of John Street, so in theory you could travel from the waterfront all the way to Rymel without having to turn on to any different streets. It of course needs some improvements, but we will get to that in this episode, where we feature Upper Wellington Street. Let's get cycling. We begin on the Jolly Cut. Now, you could exit the bike lane here and turn on to those two through streets uh, where the student driver has their four ways on, uh, or you can continue on the bike lane here. Uh, the reason why I take this route is because there is no stop sign here. Um, the cars coming off of the Jolly Cut have the right of way. That car seemed like it was very close. It was not. The camera is punched in a little bit, uh, so things seem a little bit closer. But yeah, there is no stop sign, there is no traffic lights, and you can just kind of turn and go through the lights. Now, had they been red, I wouldn't have been able to go through. So here we are on Upper Wellington. There's a lot of construction going on, but as you can see, there is four lanes across. There's plenty of room for parking the construction vehicles, the construction, <laughs> and uh, two lanes for the vehicles to uh, be traveling still. So there's plenty of space for bike lanes. The length of this route is 5.3 kilometers long, approximately, and it's relatively flat. The worst incline is about a one degree incline. <laughs> and... What's great about this route is that if you were to take John Street from the waterfront, you could travel up the Jolly Cut, if you were so brave enough to do so, and you would end up here. And another good thing about Upper Wellington is that the two major streets on either side of it, uh, where there is Upper Wentworth and Upper James, they're just far too busy. So we really need to have Upper Wellington have bike lanes. So that being said, what is the score? The score that it receives is a 76, which isn't too bad, especially considering that it's mostly this. Four lanes, you're sharing the road with vehicles, there's traffic lights, there's never a single stop sign. In fact, there is 13 lights, but it only loses 1.6 points, 1.7 points about. Uh, for all the traffic lights, and that's because the route is quite long. The biggest problem with this route is that there's not a lot of connections that it currently makes. There's the Jolly Cut, which it only gets really one point for, or not even one point, it gets a quarter of a point. Um, and then the next one is Stone Church Road, which it does get a full point for Stone Church Road. So it's a little unfortunate that there's not a lot of connections. You could say there's a close connection with Brickman's Park, and there's also a close connection with Towercrest going through, um, I believe it's called Jerome Neighborhood Park. I believe that's the park that it goes through. That's just a small bypass. <laughs> so it's not, it doesn't get a lot of bonuses for that. I guess one-eighth of a point for that, and, and going through Rickman's part, I guess one-eighth of a point. Uh, so it's just like tiny little things. But uh, if we were to add more connections, this route would do quite well. Also, if we were to make these four lanes into three lanes, or essentially two lanes with a center left turning lane, with two bike lanes flanking either side of the road, the score would go up 8%. There is a section that gets narrow, uh, which is just south of Tower Crest, and it goes all the way to Stone Church, and it's just a narrow road. Uh, we will get to that and what improvements can be done. Essentially, widening, widening the road is the answer. Now, there is a bunch of roads that are important on this route. There is the South Bend, there was Queensdale and Brucedale, 
Uh, Queensdale and Bruthdale are both decent alternatives to cycling on fennel. Fennel is very dangerous. As you approach Mohawk, South Bend becomes the good alternative. But uh, none of these roads have bike lanes. Some of them have sharrows. Um, it's just, it's not quite enough. But it is better than traveling on Mohawk and Fennel themselves. There's uh, the benefit that if you ever break it down, uh, if your bike ever gets damaged or you just run out of energy, this entire length of road has bus stops, uh, pretty much this entire length. There's about um, 200 meters that does not. And there's plenty of buses that cross through, so no matter where you need to go, you can always get on a bus with your bike, and uh, they have those little racks in the front. So it does get a few points for that. But uh, most of the points that this route loses are from the number of lane cuts and there's actually not too many most of them are north of fennel and as you get south of mohawk there's very few intersections which is good you you want to choose a route that doesn't have too many cars crossing your path and that's what makes wellington great that being said again not super ideal to cycle down. A lot of cars just see this as a wide highway. They don't have to worry about parked cars, so they treat all four lanes as traveling lanes. So we need to tell cars that, you know, to slow down. It is a 50 on this road. We need to tell them to slow down. And so having bicycle lanes and limiting traffic to each having one lane and if you want to turn left, you get into that center turning lane. I think it would help slow traffic down a bit. They would realize, hey, this is not a highway. And again, it's because it's deceiving. There's no parking spaces pretty much this entire road. And since there's no parking spaces, let's put bike lanes in. I think it's it would be ideal. Here we are at Limeridge Road. We have mentioned Limeridge Road in the past. It is, uh, it's okay. <laughs> uh, it definitely needs some improvements, but having a connection there and having bike lanes there would up the score. Every, every time there is a intersection where you can turn from a road onto the road that we're traveling or off of the road to that road and then also both directions, so there's essentially four directions, uh, it gets a full point. Here at Sorrente and Towercrest. I believe it is Towercrest. It's not Tower Line, is it? Did it used to be Tower Line? Anyway, um, Sorrente and Towercrest. There's, there's potential to have a path that connects essentially to T.B. McQuenston Park and another path going into Jerome Neighborhood Park traveling over to, I believe it is Chipman, and that could connect to Upper James. And so you could have essentially a trail from Chipman and Upper James all the way to Upper Ottawa via the T.B. McQuinston Corridor Trail. But anyways, um, here we are on the narrow section of road, and as you can see, there's lots of gravel. I'm not one for widening the road. But when it's gravel like this, please widen it, put a bike lane in, keep us safe. Cars are treating this as a highway, essentially, even though there is no connection to the Lincoln Alexander Parkway. So just, just widen the road, paint it. Again, I'm not usually one for widening the road. I like to keep grass when there is grass, but there is no grass. So yeah, I think the city should do that. And just beyond Stone Church, we have bicycle lanes until Rymel, which is great. This is what the road should be. This is a perfect example of what the entire length of Upper Wellington should be. If you did that, if you painted the wide sections that are already wide and widened the narrow section and painted that, 
the score would go up to an 88, which is quite decent, and that's not even having protected bike lanes. So there's a lot of sections that could put up bullards and concrete curb stops because there's not a lot of driveways further north. So you could put that in and you could get an amazing score and people would feel so comfortable to take this route. That along with uh, putting in bike lanes on Fennel, Mohawk, Lamridge, and Rymel, and possibly having a multi-use trail from Sorrente to Crerar. How do you say that? Crerar? 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 Crerar. Yeah. Um, that's such a hard name to say. Can we rename that place? <laughs> I know it's named after a person. Uh, I don't know who that person is, but that last name is hard to say. Uh, yeah, we go to that neighborhood park. That park essentially connects to South Park. And then we have the T.B. McQuinston Park and the Corridor Trail. And then we also have from Jerome Neighborhood Park to Chipman, if we put in a trail there, that would be awesome. So we are approaching Rymel. And just beyond Rymel, Upper Wellington does continue. The bike lane stops, and that's understandable because a lot of things south of Rymel, typically not a lot of traffic. And Upper Wellington does turn into Kettle Point. It's actually at a strange spot. Usually it's at a curve that the transition happens, but it appears, according to Google Maps, that Kettle Point starts here, just after this street, Jacqueline Boulevard, which we are going to see Jacqueline Boulevard. First, it's on the right. We're going to turn right, and it's going to be on the left, uh, and that's because that loops around. So what does Kettle Point get as a route? Well, it's a 60. Um, there's not much going on here, and so it gets a score of 60. Anyways, I hope that this video was informative, and take care, stay safe, keep pedaling. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters who are helping to make improvements to this channel.